My name's Anna, I work as an economist for a big firm in the city, numbers have always been my thing, but personal equations? Those I figured out the hard way. Life was on a predictable track until mom got sick. It was just her and me after dad passed away when I was a teenager. She was more than just a mom, she was my rock. When she got diagnosed with a condition that needed full-time care, I did the only thing that made sense, I sold her cozy house and moved her into a top-notch nursing home. The kind of place with gardens, 24-hour care, and even a piano in the lounge where she used to play her favorite tunes. It cost a fortune, but seeing her smile, playing those keys like she was young again, made every penny worth it. I remember one evening, after a long day of crunching numbers and balancing budgets, my boss, Lucy, dragged me to this party. Lucy's the head honcho at our firm, and despite her tough exterior, she's been my pillar through thick and thin. Come on, Anna, you need to let your hair down every once in a while. She had said, her arm slung over my shoulder as we walked into the loud, crowded room. I was fumbling with my purse when I bumped into him, Ethan. He was all charm, from his crooked smile, to his sparkly eyes. Sorry, didn't see you there, he chuckled, handing me back my purse, which had landed at his feet. It's alright, happens to the best of us, I replied, trying not to get lost in his deep blue eyes. As the evening rolled on, it turned out Ethan was the friend of a friend, and we got talking, about everything from work, to our favorite old movies. Turns out we both had a soft spot for old-school jazz and spaghetti westerns. Lucy and I both took a liking to him, but it was clear Ethan had eyes only for me. Lucy noticed, but she was cool about it. After he asked me out, she pulled me aside, her drink in hand. He's cute, but if he messes with you, I'll kick his ass, she half-joked in her usual no-nonsense manner. Ethan and I started dating soon after. It was all dinners, long walks, and nights spent talking about everything under the stars. He was different, kind, attentive, and he made me laugh. God, did I laugh during those first few months. Lucy stayed my rock, supporting me through my mom's worsening health, and my whirlwind romance with Ethan. When Ethan proposed, it was Lucy who helped me pick the dress, set up the venue, and even calmed my nerves right before I walked down the aisle. Married life kicked off like a dream. We'd wake up late on weekends, brew strong coffee, and talk about our future. And like any newlywed couple, we had our hearts set on finding the perfect nest, our own little corner in this big, bustling city. We spent countless Sundays driving around, peering at four sale signs, and dragging ourselves through endless open houses. The thrill of the hunt was real, but so was the sticker shock. I still remember Ethan's face the first time we looked at a house within our budget. 300 grand for this? Are they out of their minds? He blurted out as we toured a particularly cramped two-bedroom that looked more like a rundown shack than a cozy love nest. Maybe we're rushing into this. We could save up a bit more, give it another year or two. His words made sense, and honestly, the pressure to find a house right away was eating at me too. Yeah, maybe you're right. No need to rush. We've got plenty of time. I agreed, squeezing his hand. So, we put the house hunt on pause. It seemed like the sensible thing to do, and life went on. But things shifted when my mom passed. It was sudden, a call in the middle of the night that left me scrambling to get to her side, only to arrive too late. Losing her was like losing my anchor, and in the weeks that followed, I walked around in a daze. Ethan was there, though, holding me at night while I cried, making sure I ate something, even if it was just toast. One evening, as I was sorting through some of mom's papers, I found documents from the nursing home about the remaining funds. It was a hefty sum, parked quietly in a savings account, around $200,000. I hadn't thought about it much, with everything going on. Ethan was in the kitchen when I told him. His reaction was, off. Wow, that's a lot of money, babe. You know, that could buy us a house outright. No more mortgage worries, he said, a little too quickly, his eyes not quite meeting mine. I remember frowning, feeling a twinge in my gut. Yeah, maybe, I muttered, folding up the paper. But let's think about it, okay? It's all pretty fresh. Sure, sure, he replied, but there was a note in his voice that I couldn't place. 
something that made me watch him a little more closely as he turned back to chopping vegetables, his knife tapping rhythmically against the cutting board. After what felt like an eternity of house hunting and countless discussions, Ethan and I finally bought our dream home. We settled on a charming little place not too far from the city center, but still with enough backyard space for maybe a dog or two down the line. We did it, babe, I said to Ethan as we stood in our new living room, boxes stacked around us waiting to be unpacked. Yeah, we did, he smiled, wrapping his arms around me. This is all ours. The house quickly turned into a project of love. We painted, decorated, and turned it into a home. Our weekends were filled with trips to furniture stores and discussions over coffee about which curtains matched the living room decor better. It was exhausting, but thrilling. A couple of months into our new homeowner bliss, Ethan suggested we visit his mom for dinner. It's been a while, and she keeps asking about the house, he said one morning, looking up from his phone. I had only met his mom a few times. She lived on the outskirts of a small village, surrounded by forests and fields. Her house, much like her lifestyle, was quaint but cluttered with jars of herbs and tinctures. She was a firm believer in natural remedies and often boasted about curing a cold with nothing but a special tea or a concoction of her own making. When we arrived, the aroma of something herbal wafted through the air. Ethan's mom, Martha, greeted us warmly but looked a bit pale. Oh, I've just been feeling under the weather, she explained as she led us into the kitchen where dinner was laid out. Have you seen a doctor? I asked, concerned, as we settled around the table. Martha scoffed, shaking her head vigorously. No, no, I don't trust those doctors. I've got my own remedies. She gestured towards the countless jars lining the shelves. During dinner, Martha's cough seemed to worsen, and she casually mentioned, You know, Anna, maybe you could stay for a few days, help me out around here with some things? I was caught off guard. Oh, Martha, I wish I could, but work is slammed right now. We just took on a big project, and I can't really take any time off," I explained, trying to keep my tone gentle. Maybe you should do what my mom did? Martha's eyes narrowed a bit. I remember you put your mother in a nursing home, she said abruptly. Maybe that's what you think I need too. I felt a stab of pain at the mention of my mom. It was the best option for her, Martha. She needed professional care that I couldn't provide at home. Martha shook her head, dismissing my explanation. I would never let strangers take care of me. I'll stick to my herbs and tinctures, she declared, gesturing defiantly at her collection. The rest of the dinner passed in uncomfortable silence. Ethan didn't say much, and I felt the tension thickening. As we drove home, I tried to break the ice. Ethan, I didn't mean to upset your mom. It's just. He cut me off, his voice cold. Maybe you could have been a bit more understanding, Anna. She's old school, you know how she is. When Ethan and I walked through the door of our home that night, the silence was deafening. The drive had been icy cold, the kind of silence that weighs down every word before it can be spoken. We both knew something had shifted, and not for the better. As I hung up my coat, Ethan finally broke the silence. Anna, do you even love me? His voice was a mix of frustration and disbelief. I turned, startled by his question. What? Of course, I do. Why would you even ask that? He paced a bit before stopping in front of me, his eyes searching mine. Because you wouldn't stay to help my mom. If you loved me, you'd care about my family too. I was taken aback. Ethan, I do care. I've always supported your relationship with your mom. But I can't just drop everything in. And what? Lie there? He snapped. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You're not willing to make sacrifices. His words hung in the air, and I could feel the tension spike. Then, he added something that rocked me to my core. Maybe I was wrong about us. If you can't support me with this, maybe we shouldn't be together. I was speechless, my mind racing. This was not the man I married. The man I loved was understanding, compassionate. Not the stranger making ultimatums. With nowhere else to turn, I called Lucy. Her phone rang a couple of times before she picked up. 
Hey, Anna, everything okay? I poured out everything, from the dinner with Martha to Ethan's harsh words and the looming threat of divorce. Lucy listened quietly, only interjecting to clarify a point or two. After I finished, she was silent for a moment. Then, that's rough, Anna, but you know what? You did what you could. You can't just upend your life because Ethan or his mom expects you to. And threatening divorce? That's manipulative, Anna. You see that, right? Talk to him when things have cooled off. The next few weeks were tough. Ethan became more withdrawn, barely helping around the house, always buried in his phone or out for long walks alone. Whenever his mom called, he'd put her on speakerphone, ensuring I heard every complaint about her health and how she was sure she'd die without our help. Each call ended with a significant look in my direction, a silent accusation. Anna, please, think about it. I'm not getting any better. Martha would plead, her voice loud and clear from the speaker. Ethan would glance over at me, his eyes hard. You hear that, Anna? She needs us. But I couldn't bring myself to give in, not like this, not with guilt as the driving force. I knew I had to stand my ground, but with each passing day, the gap between Ethan and me widened, filled with unsaid words and unresolved tensions. Two weeks later, Lucy and I were at our favorite cafe, a little spot we'd often escaped to during work breaks. The noise of the city faded as we sipped our coffee and delved into our worlds, hers, the office, mine, increasingly tangled and dark. So, what's up? Lucy asked, her eyebrows knitting together as she noticed my distracted look. I stirred my coffee, the sugar dissolving like the last bits of my patience. It's Ethan, and his mom. Things are getting weird, Lucy. More than just the usual family drama. Lucy leaned in, her interest piqued. Weird how? What's he doing? He's pushing really hard for me to move in with his mom, like, obsessively. And he's been weirdly secretive. Something's off, I said, feeling the weight of my words. Lucy's face hardened. You think he's up to something? Anna, you might want to check this out properly. Maybe hire a private detective? See what he's really up to. Two days later, I met with a detective, a gruff man with sharp eyes, named Mike. I explained everything, how Ethan's behavior had shifted, his sudden insistence on his mother's house. Mike listened, jotting down notes. We'll see what we can dig up. It does sound like he's hiding something. Give me a couple of weeks. Those weeks were long. Each day, Ethan's coldness turned our home into a silent battleground. His calls with his mom were now daily serenades of guilt and manipulation, always on speaker. Then, the call I was waiting for came. Anna, we need to talk, Mike's voice was grave, even over the phone. We met at the same cafe where I had confided in Lucy. Mike laid his findings out like a deck of cards, each one worse than the last. Your husband's in deep trouble at work. He's on the verge of being fired because of some shady deals. And there's more, he's racked up a heap of debt, all under your radar. Mike started, his eyes never leaving mine. My heart sank. Debts? How much are we talking about? Enough that he's desperate. He's taken out loans against his future earnings, maxed out credit cards, the works. But here's the kicker. Mike paused, sliding a recording device across the table. I stared at it, my hands trembling as I pressed play. Ethan's voice filled the cafe, mingled with his mother's croaky whispers. Once Anna moves in here and I get her to transfer her assets, we can handle everything. Her money will cover it all. Ethan's voice was cold, calculated. I stopped the recording, nausea rolling in my stomach. Betrayal wasn't a strong enough word for this. Mike's next words were a blur as he advised me to get legal protection. See a lawyer, lock down your accounts. Fast. The next day, I met with a lawyer, a no-nonsense woman named Janet, who specialized in family law. We'll start by securing your accounts. Then, we'll discuss your options regarding your marriage. As I left her office, a plan forming, I felt a strange mix of relief and devastation. Relief that I was taking steps to protect myself, and devastation that the man I loved, the man I had married, was a stranger. It was a week of sleepless nights and distracted days at work. 
The phone rang, startling me from a report I'd been staring at for far too long. It was Lucy. Her voice was urgent. Anna, can you come to my office? Now. We need to talk. A chill ran down my spine. Sure, I'll be right there, I replied, my mind racing with possibilities. Lucy's tone had been serious, more than usual. I made my way to her office, my stomach tightening with every step. As soon as I walked in, Lucy shut the door and gestured for me to sit. She looked grave, her usual playful demeanor gone. Anna, there's something you need to hear, she began, her voice low. Ethan has been calling me. A lot. He's, he's been making advances. He told me he made a mistake, that he should have chosen me, not you. My heart pounded painfully. What? Lucy, what are you talking about? She held up her hand, stopping my barrage of questions. I recorded one of our conversations. You need to hear this yourself. She pulled out her phone, found a file, and pressed play. Ethan's voice filled the room, smooth and conniving. Lucy, you know I've always liked you. If only I'd made the right choice back then. But it's not too late. We could fix that. My breath hitched as I listened, each word a dagger. But worse was yet to come. I need a favor, Ethan continued on the recording. Could you, find a reason to let Anna go? Fire her. Once she's out of work, I can convince her to move in with my mom. Manage her finances, you know? Then there's nothing stopping us. Just think about it. Just us, together. I sat there, numb, as the recording ended. Lucy's face was a mask of fury and disgust. I played along, Anna. To see how far he'd go, he actually thought I was on his side, she explained, her voice thick with anger. Why would he want me to move in with his mom so badly? I managed to ask, my voice barely a whisper. Lucy shrugged, her lips pressed into a thin line. I don't know, Anna, but it's clear he's planning something sinister. You've got to be careful. Find out what he's really up to. I nodded, my mind a whirlwind of hurt and confusion. I will. I just, need to think about how to handle this. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. We'll figure this out together, Lucy said, her hand reaching across the desk to squeeze mine. I left her office with a heavy heart. Ethan's betrayal was deeper and more twisted than I could have imagined. All this time, his plans, his deception, it was overwhelming. That evening, as I sat across from Ethan at dinner, watching him pretend like nothing was amiss, I felt like I was seeing him for the first time. After dinner, I retreated to our bedroom under the guise of needing an early night. Instead, I lay there, staring at the ceiling, plotting my next move. My thoughts kept circling back to one thing, why was it so important for Ethan to get me to his mother's house? What was the ultimate gain? Driving to Martha's house felt different this time. As we pulled up, she greeted us at the door, leaning heavily on her walking stick. Her pale face broke into a strained smile. Oh, Ethan, Anna, it's so good to see you both. I really could use some help around here. I barely manage to get around these days. Ethan shot me a look, his eyes pleading for me to say something supportive. I nodded slightly, swallowing my apprehension. I'm sorry to hear that, Martha. It must be tough. As we settled into the uncomfortable familiarity of the living room, with its shelves of dusty books and jars of herbs, Martha's complaints grew more frequent. She lamented her inability to even venture into her beloved garden. Maybe a short walk might help? If you're up for it, I could help you to the garden, I suggested, watching her closely. Oh, that would be lovely, dear, Martha beamed. I just need to grab a sweater from the car. It's a bit chilly today, I said, excusing myself. Once outside, I quickly pulled out my phone, activated the dictaphone app, and slipped it into my pocket. My hands shook as I headed back, knowing that whatever was about to unfold would change everything. I helped Martha to her feet, and we slowly made our way to the garden. I'll be right back, just going to the bathroom, I murmured to Ethan, detouring back inside. Instead of heading to the bathroom, I tucked myself away in a small alcove near the living room, out of sight but within earshot. 
Their voices were low but clear, and what I heard froze my blood. Everything's almost ready, Mom. Just a bit longer, and I'll bring Anna here for a visit," Ethan said, his tone disturbingly casual. Martha's response was a chilling giggle. I prepared everything, dear. Those special herbs I told you about? They'll do the trick. No one will suspect a thing once she starts drinking them. Ethan laughed, a sound that twisted my stomach. And then it's just us. We can finally use her money to clear my debts and more. Martha's voice was greedy as she replied, Yes, yes, and you'll inherit everything after she's gone. Just make sure she stays here long enough. I waited, my heart pounding, until their voices faded, discussing mundane plans about the garden. Stepping quietly from my hiding spot, I rejoined them outside, as if nothing had happened. Shall we go back inside? It looks like it might rain, I said, my voice steady, despite the turmoil inside. The ride home was a silent nightmare. As soon as we reached home, I mumbled an excuse about feeling unwell and needing to rest. Alone in the safety of our bedroom, I replayed the recording, each word confirming the horrifying truth. The next evening, I walked through the door of our house, my emotions a whirlwind of staged anger and hidden fear. Ethan was in the living room, idly flipping through a magazine. Slamming my bag onto the sofa, I let out a controlled breath, to simulate distress. Can you believe it, Ethan? Lucy just fired me. No warning, nothing, just out of the blue. Ethan's head snapped up, his eyes widening, not with concern, but an unmistakable glint of satisfaction. Fired? Well, that's, that's unexpected. But, Anna, maybe it's for the best. Now there's nothing keeping you here. You can move in with my mom. You know she needs you. The raw shock I feigned masked my boiling anger. Move in with your mom? Are you serious? After everything, that's what you suggest. I shot back, my voice rising in controlled indignation. Ethan stood, his expression hardening as he approached me. Yes, I am serious. If you cared at all, you'd do this. And if you won't, maybe we shouldn't be together. Maybe a divorce will make you change your mind. His words were the cue I needed. With a grim smile, I pulled out the divorce papers from my bag, their crisp edges a symbol of my newfound resolve. Funny you should mention that, I said, handing them to him. I've been thinking the same thing. Ethan's face went white, but the next second, he came towards me with a menacing grimace on his face. Just then, the door swung open. Lucy and Janet, my lawyer, stepped in, their timing perfect. Ethan recoiled as if struck, the realization dawning on him that his game was up. Janet stepped forward, her presence, commanding. Ethan, you can make this easy. Sign the papers, give up claims on the house and your joint savings, walk away, and we won't press charges for what you and your mother planned. We have recordings as evidence. Ethan looked like a cornered rat, his eyes darting from my face to Lucy's and then back to the lawyer. Recordings, he stammered, his voice barely a croak. What recordings? The recordings of your conversations with your mother, Martha Miller, the lawyer clarified, her voice devoid of emotion. Conversations that clearly outline your plan to poison Mrs. Anna Miller and inherit her assets. A strangled gasp escaped Ethan's lips. His defiance crumbled, the bluster draining from him as he looked between the three of us. With a shaky hand, he signed the papers, his future, our shared past, disintegrating with each stroke of the pen. Good choice, Janet said, her voice cool as she collected the documents. You'll find it's much easier this way. Lucy approached me, her hand on my shoulder. You okay? Yeah, I think I will be, I replied, watching as Ethan's figure shrank, his plans and plots reduced to nothing more than memories and warnings. In the weeks that followed, Ethan's world unraveled further. Fired from his job due to the shady dealings, burdened by debts, he was forced to sell his mother's house just to stay afloat. They ended up in a rented apartment, a stark contrast to the life he had plotted to steal from me. As for me, I remained in the house that was once ours, now solely mine. Lucy and I, our friendship solidified by the ordeal, often sat in my garden, talking about everything and nothing. Life had thrown me into the depths, 
but I had emerged, not just surviving, but thriving.